Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my ultimate college basketball March Madness AP poll breakdown where I go through the AP poll, but not only the AP poll, we've got conference tournaments starting up and I'm going to take a look at all the tournaments that are beginning this week. Let's do a quick breakdown on the AP poll in the bracket first. We do have Houston sitting at number one overall. Not that this matters too much, the AP poll. Kind of just a barometer for where these teams are. UConn up one spot to number two. Purdue drops to number three. We would expect all those teams to be very easy one seeds. And how about Tennessee sitting at number four? Could they be the final one seed? Some people think so. Other people think it's going to be Arizona. Right now, Arizona sitting at number five in the AP poll. Iowa State up to number six, possibly on the two line two or three line we'll see North Carolina up two spots to number seven Marquette falls three spots down to number eight Duke who's been very impressive recently I'm going to talk about that in a second they're up to number nine Creighton at number 10 up two spots you do have Baylor sitting at number 11 up four spots lying in the weeds this year Baylor nobody's talking about them Illinois up one spot to number 12 I am very high on the Illini and their offensive firepower entering this tournament, you do have Auburn at number 13, down two spots. Kansas falling, having one of their worst years in a while, which is pretty crazy considering they're still inside the top 15. At number 14, Kentucky up one spot. Crazy great offense, horrible defense. It, it is crazy. Both Kentucky and Alabama, some of the games that I've seen, I, I mean, they're scoring in the hundreds consistently in college. Bama's at number 16. They're down two spots. You do have South Carolina up one spot. Washington State in their Cinderella season, making the tournament for the first time in forever. Gonzaga, the win over St. Mary's, that's going to put them in the tournament and it's going to absolve them from having to play in the first four as well. BYU stays at number 20. San Diego State down one spot. Utah State, St. Mary's, South Florida, and their run right now all the way to 22-5 and five at number 24. And then Dayton, the loss to Loyola, Chicago, down four spots. This is a two-week rolling average. Who are the best teams in college basketball within the last two weeks? Duke analytically with a 3-1 and record, is the number one team in college basketball within the last two weeks. Creighton is number two. Houston, no surprise there. Auburn, St. John's, 3-0. and The analytics love them. The number five team in college basketball in the last two weeks, Marquette, Tennessee, Gonzaga on a run, Boise State, Purdue, UConn, Arizona, no surprises there. Colorado, Nebraska, South Carolina, and Iowa, who has been on the bubble recently. That's a big run from Iowa, 3-1 and one in their last four games, and a top 16 team analytically within the past two weeks. Getting to the bracket right now, this is how the most deserved bracket looks. You do have Purdue, Houston, UConn, and Tennessee taking that final number one seed spot. The two seeds, Arizona, North Carolina, Marquette, and Iowa State moves up to the two line. Duke is the first three seed, Baylor, Kansas, and Creighton. So it looks like Kansas is a firm three seed right now. Baylor is a firm three seed. Duke potentially could move to the two line, especially with the run that they've been on. At the four line, you do have Illinois, Auburn, BYU up to a four, and Alabama as well, the final Four seed moving to the five line it is South Carolina, Kentucky, Gonzaga, all the way up to a five seed. The analytics like them and San Diego State as well. The six line, Washington State charging up to a six seed. Clemson down a seed line. They were a five seed the last time I saw this. Utah State and Wisconsin trending downward as well. You've got Nevada starting the seven line, Northwestern, Dayton trending down, and Boise State. Nebraska, possibly in an 8v9 matchup, TCU, Texas, and Oklahoma. The nine seeds right now, it is St. Mary's coming off that loss to Gonzaga, Texas Tech, Florida, Virginia. The 10 line, it is MSU, Villanova, Mississippi State, and Colorado State. And then the teams on the bubble right now, 11 seeds, it is Colorado and Indiana State right now. The 12 seeds, FAU, James Madison, Princeton, and Grand Canyon up to the 12 line with McNeese getting knocked down to the 13 line along with Samford, Vermont, and UC Irvine. Charleston, La Tech, Akron, and High Point still the 14 seeds, Moorhead State, Weber State, Colgate, and Youngstown State on the 15 line with Quinnipiac and Lipscomb. On the 16 line, looking at the teams right now on the bubble, you do have Wake Forest. They are loved analytically. They would be the last four in. Same with St. John's. Same with Utah and Pittsburgh. And then the first ones out, Iowa right now. The first team out, at least according to this. 
analytical system. Also, Seton Hall right there. The blowout loss is not going to help them. You also have Providence, Syracuse, Butler, New Mexico, Drake, and Ole Miss with a few other teams possibly also, if they go on tournament runs, having a chance at the tournament. Let's look at all the mid-major conference tournaments that are set. This is the A-Sun. So right now, the expectation would be the number one seed. Eastern Kentucky would get the auto bid out of this league. You also do have Lipscomb and Stenson. A lot of people do like Lipscomb. The analytics do favor the number three seed Lipscomb to come out of this bracket and win it and get the auto bid. But Eastern Kentucky technically is the one seed and Stenson is the two seed. Moving on to the Big South, you do have High Point, the number one overall seed. They have been the auto bid. You know, we've expected them to be the auto bid for a while now. You do also have UNC Asheville, who's made the tournament a lot recently as the two seed, along with Gardner Webb sitting as the three seed. But the expectation would be that High Point would get the auto bid and possibly be a 14 seed out of the Big South. You do have the Coastal Athletic Tournament, the CAA. Right now, the College of Charleston, the number one overall seed there. You do have Drexel sitting as a two seed. Drexel recently made the tournament, but the College of Charleston, they've been a really good basketball program. I would expect them to get the auto bid and come out of that conference a winner. The Horizon League is very competitive this year. You do have Oakland sitting as the number one overall seed, but Youngstown State analytically is liked over Oakland, possibly to win this league. Green Bay, what a crazy comeback from them. They were, I mean, they had like four or five wins last year. They were horrible. This year, they are a three seed in the horizon. Certainly, I would not think that they would win this league and get the auto bid. If they did, they'd probably be a 15 seed, I'd say, maybe a 16 seed. Whoever wins this league is going to be a 15 seed, though, I would guess, unless it's a crazy upset. Imagine Detroit Mercer winning with one win. I would root for them to win, but it's not going to happen. Moving on to the Missouri Valley Tournament. So this is a huge one. Indiana State right now, are they in a position to where, let's say Indiana State makes the final and loses to Drake, would they possibly be in, you know, as an at-large? Probably not. They're probably going to need to win it. All the other teams are going to need to win it as well. Drake is another team. You would expect the final to be either Indiana State against Drake or Indiana State against Bradley. I would expect Drake and Bradley to be a very good semifinal matchup. And Indiana State is the favorite. Everyone's been talking about them. They're like 25-5. and five. They would actually be getting more hype if they didn't lose a few games towards the end of the season. But either way, the Missouri Valley should be competitive. And you do have to watch out for Drake or Bradley to possibly upset Indiana State. Looking at the Northeast Tournament, you do have Central Connecticut listed as the number one overall seed here. You do also have Merrimack as the two seed. The analytics do like Merrimack, the two seed over the one seed, Central Connecticut. Both of them are very close. I'm surprised Central Connecticut's the one seed. They're normally a horrible basketball program, so congratulations to them. The Ohio Valley Tournament, you do have Little Rock here. This is a very easy format for the favorites. Little Rock getting two auto buys, the number one overall seed, and then Tennessee Martin, the number two seed. I would uh, expect either Little Rock or Moorhead State to win this conference. Uh, the analytics do like the three seed Moorhead State to win this conference over Little Rock, but we will see. Moving to the Patriot League, you do have Colgate. So Colgate is in, on a crazy dynasty run right now within the, the Patriot League. I would expect them to win this tournament relatively easily. The Patriot League is really bad. Boston is a really bad two seed. They should run through this tournament and probably be a 15 seed, make yet another tournament. Moving on to the Southern Tournament, you do have Sanford listed as the number one overall seed. UNC Greensboro as the two seed. I'd expect Sanford to run through this tournament. They did recently get blown out really badly, but um, I'm guessing Sanford. They've had some injuries. I'm guessing Sanford will win that league. The Summit Auto Bid, you do have a weak Summit this year. So South Dakota State, if they win it, they will very likely be a 16 seed. I remember a few years ago, the Summit League champion was like a 12 seed. I mean, Oral Roberts, right? This is... The, the league with Oral Roberts in it. Oral Roberts not good this year, listed as an eight seed. You do also have, wow, Kansas City moved to the two line. Because I know North Dakota there for a while was thought to be the team. But I would expect it to either be South Dakota State or North Dakota. Probably South Dakota State to come out of here and be a 16 seed. Moving on to the Sun Belt, you do have Appalachian State and James Madison. Very, very uh, interesting possible championship game between those two teams. James Madison early in the year was ranked. They started undefeated. 
Appalachian State recently has, went on an, has been on an absolute tear, and I would think the final would be App State versus James Madison, one versus two. The West Coast Tournament, they do that really weird thing that really allows the favorites to get like an auto bid to the final. Uh, St. Mary's the number one overall seed, Gonzaga the number two seed. They both just have to win one game. Uh, Santa Clara had a nice year early in the year. They were decent. They kind of fell off. San Francisco is always kind of decent. I would say maybe the Gonzaga-San Francisco game might be interesting, but other than that, I'd expect a final of St. Mary's taken on Gonzaga. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this update. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.